Well, a quick description of my show would simply read, The World on a String, a show full of surprises. For instance, I play the song from the movie Godfather in a very traditional mandolin-like style. The surprise comes when I kick it up a notch and play the Godfather as a tango. Another big surprise is when I play a classical composition by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's called Yesu, Joy of Man's Desiring, and I know the audience isn't expecting that. The biggest surprise is the way I start my show. You see, I walk out on stage, the orchestra is hidden behind the curtain. I sit down and all by myself, I start playing the great classic, Malaguena. Now, why is Malaguena a big surprise? Well, Malaguena usually closes a show, not starts one. I designed my show around two basic themes. The first deals with how my grandfather taught me the instrument, and the second revolves around the history of the All-American Banjo, in which I, I immediately take the audience back to the time of Stephen Foster. Well, Stephen Foster was writing tunes that were more difficult, like his little tune, Old Susanna. It required the banjo player to add a third finger to the picking pattern, and on top of that, they had to start wearing these little forms of torture called finger picks, which are not only uncomfortable, but they're also hard to find. Now, of course, I don't know how many of you folks have ever had the occasion to go shopping in a music store to go to pick a pick, but a word of advice from a professional. When picking your pick, never nitpick, even though there's a pack of picks out there to pick from, and one should be picky and pick through a pack of picks before picking just any pick. The history theme continues through the ragtime era on into the Roaring Twenties and then on into the 1930s where the guitar displaces the banjo as the top stringed instrument in jazz. In the 1930s progressed, so did these early jazz guitar players, and the sound of the modern jazz guitar was born. The big hit tune, Dueling Banjos, ends the history part of my show, but even here, there's a bit of a surprise. Now, now, it was this style called bluegrass that brought the banjo back and brought it back in a big way because in the 1970s, this movie came out called Deliverance. 
And in the theme music, they had this guitar player duking it out with this five-string bluegrass banjo player, and they called that big hit tune, what they call it, you know? The banjos. Now, here's the cool part. Dueling Banjos was not really written for the movie Deliverance. It had actually been written some 20 years before the movie was a minor country hit in the early 50s under the original title, Feuding Banjos. And on that original recording, Nashville actually teamed up two banjo players, not a guitar player and a banjo player, but two banjo players. Now, one of them was a four-string Dixieland banjo player who sounded like this. The fellow's name was Arthur Smith, and they had him dueling with a five-string bluegrass banjo player. A fellow named Don Reno, who played like this. Now, what I'm going to try to do tonight, folks, is something you will never hear another banjo player ever do again in my particular price range. <laughs> Dueling banjos originally played on two banjos. I'm going to do it tonight right here on one. When you tell an audience that you're going to play on one instrument, what it originally took two musicians with two instruments to play, well, you'd better be able to deliver. I created this show with the audience always in mind. First and foremost, I want the folks to have a great time. And to make sure everyone has a good time, I always play highly recognizable music. That's why for my final piece, my last big surprise to end the show, I play my own arrangement of the great Broadway musical Fiddler on the Roof. Now, on top of having a good time, I also want the folks to take away some positive and uplifting information about America's only true instrument. That's why during the course of a show, I'll play everything from Bach to bluegrass, uh, Dixie jazz to Broadway show tunes, traditional Irish to ragtime compositions, and it's all done with the intent of capturing the imagination of each and every audience member. Now, I just love doing my show, The World on a String. And when I hit that last note of the last tune at the end of my performance, the audience always rewards me with the biggest, best surprise of the show, a standing ovation. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Maddox. Doug 